All right, boom, we're back at it. How we doing? Are we good? Yeah, we're good. We're on. We're lot. We're we're rolling. I'm in. I'm in. A, I'm in. A, I'm in a secret location. <laughs> I give you credit. You're in. You're in the other. You're in the cave. You're in like uh, John Gruden. You're in like John Gruden's little studio with all the tapes. <laughs> oh, with all the emails. <laughs> yeah, his. Uh, what is it? It's like yeah. <laughs> what was what was his thing? The uh, uh, fired coaches association or something? He had going. Oh go yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, today's going to be a great guest, and I'll let you intro him in a second. We got Coach uh, Tommy Farrell, the head coach of Manchester High School. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, the youngest uh, head coach in the short conference? or Yeah, I Farrell? believe he is the youngest head coach in the short conference, and uh, I believe one of, if not the youngest in the state. So, interesting. Give, give, give us a little background, then I'll let him I'll let him intro himself as well. But Oh, sure. So, uh, you know, Tommy's uh, obviously family, uh, known him for a long time, great kid. Uh, went to um, Donovan Catholic, which was uh, Monsignor Donovan at the time. He went on to play at Stonehill, always a smart kid, um, and really kind of jumped into coaching right away. Uh, obviously, he's the son of a coach, been around sports his entire life. Uh, young, so passionate, um, and was fortunate enough after a couple of gigs and a couple of stints to uh, to land a head coaching job at Manchester, and uh, he's coming up on year two. And I'll tell you one thing: you can already start to see the culture change, uh, and it's really awesome to see a, a young guy really be, you know, successful. Maybe not, maybe not looked at in wins and losses, but off the field and that, uh, in like the culture aspect of just changing lives in general. So. You know, I'm obviously biased him being family, but uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to hearing his perspective on on just things about the game. Well, we're gonna bring him in and and, and talk about a lot of things today, so it should be a it should be a lot of fun. Um, Let's rock and roll! I'm excited. Here he is, Coach. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. Derek, you, that was the nicest thing you said to me, I think, since I've known you. As my person. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors, bro. I got to be kind of nice. Listen, I was taught to always start, always lead with a compliment. Always lead with something positive, and then you can start. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I appreciate that, guys. <laughs> my God, buddy. <laughs> Coach, tell everybody your background, um, you know, where you played, how you got into coaching, what, what what kind of got you there, and then obviously where you are now. And Yeah. Yeah, so I, look, I, I have to start off with my father, you know, uh, great relationship with my dad. He's coached at New Egypt and Donovan and, and Monmouth University. Um, he got out of coaching right when I went into high school at Donovan in 2009 um, to watch me play. Um, I was lucky enough to play for Coach Duddy. Um, where we won the B South championship in 2012, uh, went six and four. Um, I had the unfortunate experience of blocking or trying to block Quentin Nelson uh, in the non-public <laughs> playoffs. Uh, that wasn't fun. Um, but I was lucky enough to play at uh, Stonehill College, uh, which is now Division One. I'm, I'm lucky. To, I'm happy to see what Coach Gardner is doing there. Uh, played outside linebacker. Um, then right out of college, uh, I got my master's at Syracuse. New uh, my junior year of college, I, I blew my knee out. I was helping the younger kids out, knew I wanted to coach someday down the road. Uh, so Coach Fence at New Egypt uh, gave me that opportunity right out the gate. Uh, 2018 and 2019, I coached at New Egypt. Uh, 2020, I got my first teaching gig up in Parsippany, where I uh, drove an hour 40, but I loved every second yeah. of it. Uh, coach, coaching with Derek Eatman, I would call Derek, my cousin Derek, all the time on my way home uh, when I was in traffic on, on uh, 280. Um, and then I had the, I, I had a, I had a really lucky experience, uh, to go to shore regional with coach Kaz, yeah, um, coaching with him for a year. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I thought I was going to be at shore for a long time learning under him. And I was fortunate enough. I live in Manchester. The job opened up, uh, I applied for it and I was lucky enough to get the gig and, you know, we're going in year two. We have a lot of returning starters coming back and this should be a, should be an exciting season for Manchester. Cool. What, who were some of the teams that are on your schedule this year? Yeah, so we open up uh, this Friday with North Plainfield, who okay. is the who Derek Eatman is the head coach who I worked under at Parsippany know. High School. So uh, yeah, that should be so, a fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, remember, <laughs> I remember when you guys were setting that up. That, I thought that was kind of cool, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah. So we're both Group Three teams. Um, he always, you know, we we call it the Iron Bowl. It's the first annual Iron Bowl. F for Farrell, E for Eatman, F E is Iron. Nice. 
Um, so we're calling it the first annual Iron Bowl. They're coming down to Hawks to, to the Hawks Nest on Friday night, and uh, hopefully we'll go there next year. They're getting a new stadium up in North Plainfield this year. So uh, just a great opportunity for the kids to, to play different areas of the state. So we're, fr- we're fired up for Friday night. That, that is cool. Um, so going into a program, taking it over as and, – and I'm just thinking back to, I mean – now, I, as I'm getting, I'm getting older now, so I'm 49. But <laughs> I, I know what it's like to take over a program at a young age. I was a head coach at 30, so um, and I had only been co- it had only been coaching for three years at the time when I became a head coach. So because I didn't start coaching right away, I was in, um, uh, I was working for co- corporations for a few years. So um, I know what it's like. It could be, it could be, cha- it's exciting. It's challenge. It's everything all wrapped up in one, right? You're, you're yeah. learning as they're learning. Um, t- tell me some of the things that you found to be the most exciting and the most challenging, you know, be, being a younger coach. So the most exciting thing is to me, um, we walk out with the band Friday nights, like from the locker room, we walk through the tailgate in the parking lot, right onto the stadium um, there's nothing like Friday night lights. Um, there's nothing like, you know, walking through your family. Um, even when you're a player, um, I took that from coach Eatman at Parsippany. We walked with the band out onto the field, um, down the hill at Parsippany. Um, and I love, I loved every second of it. And going back to what I said, you know, hurting my knee in college, my junior year, when I was out, I was out for the whole year. Um, I knew that football was not going to be over for me in just one year. I knew I needed to be on the sideline. Um, not, not to be, uh, a player not to be as much as I love the chess match of football, you know, you run this, I'm going to call this um, just to be in that atmosphere and to lead young men. Um, you know, I, I'm a product of coach Duddy at Donovan, who's very positive. Um, I'm not afraid to tell a kid. I love him. Uh, you know, even if I rip you in practice, I'm the first one to put my arm around your shoulder and just to be, you know, I, I, I know you guys are going to say I, I'm, I'm the youngest, this, I'm the, young, you know, at, at the end of the day, I, I'm a head coach and, and I, I love leading these young men and I know what these kids need. Um, so to get this opportunity at Manchester, just to lead these young men um, is great. Look, I, I lift with the kids. I, I run with the kids. Um, I listen. I listen to their music. I'm not afraid to say that. So um, to relate to their level, they know I'm not their friend. Um, they know I'm their coach. But to have that bonding experience with them on and off the field is, is just huge. And um, that's what I'm fired up to do every day. I wake up before my alarm. Um, this is what I was meant to do. And I'm, I'm just happy to be here. I mean, I'm blessed. When you think about um, coaching from a like philosophical standpoint, you talked about like the positivity that you, you know, the environment that you came from. What is kind of your philosophical approach to developing and building your team? And uh, the reason I say it, right. Manchester, they've had some great, they've had some really good teams, but there's been a lot of ups and downs at Manchester, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And, Inconsistency. And it, all right. That's a great word for, okay. So um, what, what is your philosophy and approach to building for the long run to be able to, to, to build the program up the way that you want it to become? I think if they believe in you off the football field, right? Like I'm proud to say, I'm, I'm going to brag about, I, I don't, I'm not a braggadocious person. I don't like, you know, as much as I love being on this show, I, I don't like doing this stuff necessarily because I love the chess match of football. Um, but here's one thing I'll brag about. You know, we had a, th- uh, for what I can recall is the first time that Manchester football had a 3.0 team GPA. Um, so for them to believe in me off the field, to get the jobs done in the classroom, uh, we did three or four community service trips, uh, to the 55 up communities in Manchester. I saw that. Um, that you, was excellent. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's great. And, t- and not only did I make them do it, the kids enjoyed doing it. Um, and then another thing, you know, going back to when I played at Stonehill, you see it on my sweatshirt dig. Um, I, I took it from Stonehill, uh, discipline, intellect, and grit. I always say, you know, like for example, today's Wednesday's practice. We did not have any intellect today. We were, we were disciplined when we went on a hard count, we were gritty in between the trenches, but, you know, we made some uh, philosophical errors, some schematical errors in the secondary. We lacked intellect. So discipline, intellect and grit. If we hit all three phases, we're probably going to be successful on the football field. Um, and, you know, Coach Schumann, like culture is 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 a great word. It's a great thing that as a first year head coach to build a program off of. Um, 
but it, it, it's also a buzzword, you know, like I can do all these things. We can get them new, nice white helmets. We can get them, you know, into the, com in, into the community. We can get them having good grades and those are all great. And I'm not diminishing that by any means. Um, but at the end of the day, like I am a football coach, I am a competitor and, and I want this to relate to wins at the end of the day. So um, I, I think we're going to take that step. I'm, I'm hoping we take that step. You know, we have the talent to do it. Now it's just time to execute. And I'd like to think that's coaching. Um, if I can get these kids to execute with the talent that they have, um, that's that's the step from going from year one to year two as a head football coach. Very cool. What what are some of the building block things that you think are essential? So uh, you got, you know, weight room is obviously an important part of it. But what are what are the things that you build into the program to help each individual kind of be successful uh, as a player? Yeah. So, look, I'm a, I'm a run first kind of guy. I want to bring back that old school Ocean County smash mouth football to Manchester um, and nothing against before I got there. They were a five wide. They were, you know, slinging sling it kind of football team. Um, I'm kind of the opposite. So to be that smash mouth football team going off of you like a building block or a philo philosophical thing, I think we had to get in the weight room. I think that was a, a, a part of me. No, no excuses. Uh, part of me joining late last year was we didn't really have a, a, a good offseason program. So for me, being in the weight room for an entire year, you you see that yeah. now with a with a returning. Oh, absolutely. With, we're returning all linemen on both sides of the ball. Um, so to, if we want to build that identity of running the football and being in 21 personnel, we got to win up front. And that was huge in the weight room. So yeah, to answer your question, the, the weight room was, was everything. Um, and even during camp, we, I, I, my brother, you know, Derek, my brother plays at Monmouth university. I met with coach Tim, who's their strength and conditioning coach. And they lift two to three days a week. I followed that exact program when I was at Monmouth, not the lifts necessarily, yeah. but just, just but building those strength just building blocks in, in the weight room, just being in there. Absolutely. And, yeah. and you, you know, like being in the weight room is one thing you can go to, you know, Tom's river fitness or planet fitness and, and being there. Oh, I was in the gym for two hours. No, you can get That's in the sweet. weight room for 30 to 45 minutes and, and really get yeah. after it. So, so that was a huge, I took attendance in the off season. I'm, I'm all about multiple sports. If you played a sport, great. I wanted you to play multiple sports. But if you weren't, I was taking attendance uh, in the offseason. And that's kind of how we picked jersey numbers this year. It wasn't just by class. It was nice. how many times are you in the weight room? How many times, uh, you know, did you not get in trouble? You know, it was pretty much like a, the less demerits you had or the less points you had, yeah. you got to pick your jersey numbers. So there were some sophomores that picked the jersey number before senior. And that's just kind of how I started it going into year two, uh, just being in the weight room, uh, especially with the identity we want to build on the offensive side of the ball. That's I think I think that's great, man. I mean, honestly, that's a great way, a little nice incentive for those younger guys to kind of, hey, man, like I can go do this. If I, if I do this, I can get rewarded and really kind of follow through with it. And I'll tell you one thing, and, and Dave, he can back me up on it because he was at Mom at 7-on-7 seven seven when your team was there. And so he's seen your guys live. And I, I said, I, the first thing I said was, damn, this is not the same team looking wise, physically. Yeah. Like you can tell these guys have been doing stuff to get bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah. Because looking at some of those guys that I saw in camp last year and now saw in June, totally different team physically. Yeah. I mean, look, look, at the end of the day, you know, and, and I appreciate the compliment cuz, but you know, we can look the part. Um, but at that mom at seven on seven, we didn't perform the part. Uh, but the good thing is, is that we improved from the mom at seven on seven to the shore's best seven on seven to the shore conference seven on seven. And, and, and you told me this cause like, it's all about improving and competing. And we did that yeah. from the first seven on seven to the second seven on seven. I'm not a guy at the banquet. You know, I have my banquet on Super Bowl Sunday, uh, for, we do a banquet brunch. Uh, I'm not the kind of guy that talks about seven on sevens or scrimmages um, because that doesn't matter. That's not on my resume. Just that's not on our resume, it. but the nope. improvement aspect and um, just being a student of the game to improve was huge for us. Uh, it was awesome. It was just good to see. So, well, every part of it is, is part of the building, the culture and getting the more wins you have, whether it's in seven on seven or it's at a scrimmage or yeah. they just build on itself, it builds confidence and, and those things build on each other in order to become, you know, more successful uh, as a team. What, what, what are your, so let, let's say like, let's go to look at like some plans. Um, if you were, uh, if, yes. Yeah. So if you were to say like, do you, and I don't know if you do or you don't like, um, 
I'll give future. an example. Yeah, so uh, Derek knows this. So when uh, years ago when I took over a program, Pal Park, Leonia, it was probably one of the worst teams in the uh, state of New Jersey when we took it over. P.S. And- PS over Peck Park, like just whatever. They had to move all those games that they were going to do there. They had to move them because the field conditions are unplayable. So something oh, really? over Peck Park. Why? They were supposed yeah. to have games over Peck Park? Yeah, like they had like a little jamboree, like Ramsey oh, was playing okay. somebody, like all that, and then it. they uh, they have to they had to move it to Westwood because field is deemed unplayable. Really, I didn't even know that. Um, that's that's the, where's that taxpayer money? I am. The fun I fact of New Jersey I, I high like school football is Derek DePascal. Yeah, I know he I is. Know. What, what, what? Listen, so once you move below the bridge, like, you know, obviously I lived Dude, up there that's, We're out of it. I, I don't even know I, what's I going on half the time. So, and like, listen, you know, when I was up in North Jersey, you know, Tommy got the coach in Parsippany. Tommy got the coach in yeah. Parsippany for a year. So he was, yeah, 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 he was yeah. Morris County for a year. I'm getting these calls like, hey, I got to play Mountain Lakes. And, uh, hey, buddy, buckle up, buddy. Here they come, dude. Like, you know, yeah, be hey, glad you get, got out of Persephone. Oh, no, dude. they can't be that. I said, yeah, dude, just wait. Uh, uh, you don't understand. Uh, Some of these guys are brutal. But anyway, oh, go ahead, man. Coach. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not uh, – it's – well, Parsippany Troy Hills is not is not a bad place to be. That's no. that's the problem why Parsippany has a hard time because Parsippany Troy Hills, again, right. again, everyone wants to go there. Um, so uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, so anyway, so when I took over that pro, it was it was just you know it was left for dead. It was a co op, and the superintendent came to me and he said, "Listen, you know it's gonna take you five years to get." to where you want to be. So we set that as our goal. Like the fifth year was to go to be in the state championship. Amazingly, we were able to do it. We, 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 but if I said like year two, uh, um, I, well, I would have been doing is torturing myself. You know what I mean? Now, obviously when you have your, you know, with your kids, I, I would say every year our goal is to, to, to win a state championship, to win a league championship. Those are our goals, but the key is progress, right? You don't get to that point. Yep. right away all the time how do you how do you stay in st- a step with players in, in in as you're building the program at the same time that you're looking to to you know one day win a state championship because every coach that's what their goal is um and and how, how do you do that from a balance standpoint i know it's a tough question but you no, know gotcha. i'm curious to hear well the first thing is you know go, look going into the interview you know as, as a 27 year old last year um going into the interview I wanted to see, you know, did I have administrative support? And I absolutely did. Um, you know, Keith Lister, my athletic director, has been nothing but amazing to me since I've been there. Uh, my superintendent, John Baronado, he's, I was, I think I was his first hire. Um, and it, it, we just have that, that special relationship where I, I can text him. Um, I can text my superintendent. I can text my athletic director. Yeah, that's um, there's that, uh, you know, communication is huge for me. Um, and it's huge for them as well. So to be on, to just to have a transparency aspect to it is, is awesome. But to answer your question, um, you know, from a goals aspect, right? Like I, I don't want to take the cliche answer and say, I don't have football goals, but I'm gonna, and I don't have football goals. Um, I, I think I took that from uh, PJ Fleck. He always says he never has football goals for his team. He has community service goals. He has uh, academic goals and he lets the captains, And the senior leadership provide the football goals. Now, like I said before, is winning important to me? Absolutely. If winning was important to me, I should not be a head football coach. I should not be a coach in general. I'm a competitor. I'm a competitor at heart. Um, At the end of the day, everybody wants to win. Right. But it is at at, at the high school level, I will say, here's maybe where I'm different. It's bigger than football, um, especially in Manchester. It's a blue collar community. I want to see these kids get to college. I want to see these kids serve the community. Um, but when you do those things outside of the football field, um, you know, those goals are going to relay onto the football field. And my seniors, I, I don't want to put it on this show what their goals are, but they have high aspirations. And I don't know the last time Manchester had had very high on the field goals. Um, so for my cap, I have a captain's dinner the night before training camp starts. So um, we started August that. 7th, I love that you do that. August, August 6th. Um, I have the team. I took it from coach Duddy. Each player votes for their captains. The coaches also vote. Um, I, I tallied all the votes on a piece of paper. Uh, I, I nominated the captains in minicamp. 
And they came to my house for a steak. I make, I grill steaks. I make potato. I'm, you know, I look like my Italian mother, Derek, but I'm Irish, <laughs> right? My name is Irish. I, I, my mom says Listen, I may look man. like her, but I act like my dad. <laughs> you want to talk what about an say? Irish family, buddy? Whoa, baby. <laughs> so I have my, I have my captains over for dinner. And the, the only rule is I don't want to talk about football. Let's talk about school. Let's talk about your friend group. Let's talk about what you guys are doing in the summer. And that camaraderie builds into, wow, now when I get to hit a different color jersey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support my brother through and through from whistle to whistle, from quarter to quarter. Um, and that's huge. So I know what the football goals my guys have. Um, it, when I lay the foundation now, again, and I know I'm, I'm going a little long here, I'm blessed enough to have uh, 11 assistants on my staff. That's I four, amazing. I have four yeah, volunteers. He's got a ton. He's got a, he's That's got a ton. I have four volunteers who are all alumni, right. and I have three former head coaches on my staff. And Bob Maseri, That's, who coached that is my a dad great, at Donovan. That's something you should definitely touch on because your yeah, staff, I, it's so I, like. Yeah, no. I, you, you set it up the right way where, look, and I know you're smart enough to do it this way, right? Yeah. And, and with dad and everything, it's a great way to. But you know, hey, I'm going into this as a young head coach. I'm not going to yep. know everything. At least if I surround myself with some of those guys, right, they've gone through what I don't know how to handle. Or, you know, Absolutely. they can kind of just help me. I mean, look, you set it up great. And to have those guys on staff, what a benefit. All right. So, yeah. So just to touch on that, let me let me shout them out real quick. So Bob Misery, State Hall of Famer, Shore Conference Hall of Famer. Coach that we have more fin- we have uh, he has more coaching experience than we do on all fingers and toes. Um, he <laughs> actually, he just did a stint in Lee, Florida, I think a couple years ago uh, before he came back. Uh, he was my dad's head coach at Donovan. I got uh, Gerard O'Donnell, who's the, my uncle, my dad's best friend. I call him Uncle G. He's my defense coordinator, winning his coach at Manchester uh, with 27 wins. And then I got Lamar Davenport, who I just brought on board as my D-backs coach. He was the Asbury Park Asbury. Head coach last year. And we were and we were and he doesn't talk that much. He's a soft spoken dude. I said, yo, Lamar, don't be afraid to speak up, bro. You have the highest winning percentage out of any coach on the staff. He went five and three <laughs> last year. Uh, uh, yeah. And then, you know, and then I have Jeff Brown as my offense coordinator, who's won multiple state championships with Jackson Memorial. I think he went to a sectional with Mainland when he was the uh, O-line coach there two years ago. I'm just blessed with an amazing staff and and I relay things here and there, but they also know at the end of the day, I'm, I'm the head coach, you know, no matter what my age is. Um, so they respect that. The kids respect that. Um, but just to bounce ideas off of former head coaches, off of 11 coaches, off of four volunteers who played at Manchester back in the day is, is absolutely huge. And, you know, I'm not going to sit. I know the two of you will both say, you know, you could still be a head coach and you don't know all the answers. Bob Masseri at 74 years old says he doesn't have all the answers, but when you have 12 guys who believe in the same thing and have the same mm-hmm. values, it makes my job so much easier. hundred percent. That That's a fantastic and unique thing that you have in taking over a program that has had not had a history of a lot of success because that doesn't usually happen. Usually what happens is there's a whole huge transition year from year yeah. one to year two to year three to be able to start with that is really a great thing. It gives it gives you a, a leg up foundation wise. Yeah, foundation. Yeah. I mean foundation, right? Which is you're gonna build off of that anyway, right? You don't have to right. build a right. foundation. You have the foundation to start with, which is which is amazing. That really is amazing. And going off the of foundation, not to interrupt you coach, but yeah, no, my, my my freshman coach Joe Saratelli. Um, one of the best football players in Jackson Memorial history was on that team. Oh, two, oh, three. I think it was oh one, oh, two, oh, three. That like, I think he said he lost two football games in his entire career. Um, so to have him come back from coaching after, a, you know, a little stint of not coaching and to be my freshman coach, which you guys both know that to have a freshman coach, you can trust and run that program is vital. Um, so I, I have to give him a it's shout out as well. I know I'm probably missing people, him and what uh, I'm missing people, but I'm I'm just I'm super blessed. You know, it makes my job so much easier. That's awesome. That that was really great. I think we got like a, a really, really mm. good groundwork of success. So now we can get to the fun stuff. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we like to get we like to get uh, uh your opinions on different things within like uh college football. And we always, yeah. we always everyone we, we kind of bring on, we talk about uh, a couple of these topics with that Derek probably knows where I'm going. 
Um, because I'm always, uh, it's, it, there's no wrong or right answer. We, we are always just curious because the world of uh, high school football and college football is constantly evolving mm -hmm. and, um, and recruiting, right, which is basically the, the world we're in. What is what is your approach to recruiting with the with your kids? Like, how how do you set the stage with your parents? How do you set the stage with your players? Because that today in today's football, the way football is 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 such a difficult thing. Not just not not just because recruiting that's a whole different ball game, which we'll talk about. But but like helping everyone understand expectations. How, how do you do that? Yeah. So. The first thing I do is I'm not afraid to say it. I, I try to go to every single home AYF game uh, at Manchester. I'm lucky to live in Manchester. The AY fields, AYF fields are closer to my house than the high school. I could ride my bike there if I wanted to. There's no excuse for me to not go there, show my face, wear a Manchester sweatshirt. I, I, I'll do all that. Um, from a recruiting aspect, you know, with the new rules of transferring and recruiting, here's what I'll say. And maybe this isn't the young guy take. I don't have the foundation to recruit right now. If I was in eighth grade and I was an eighth grader's parent, why would you come to Manchester? Let's call a spade a spade. Three and seven last year. Only winning season in the last 10 years, I believe, was 2021. Um, besides 2010. You know, what am I going to do to sell the school? I, look, I'm, I'm coming out here. My administrator is probably going to be mad at me. But at the end of the day, we're not a winning program. That's on me. I'm a losing coach at three and seven. Um, so, for example, I have I have a couple kids who play at Manchester AYF who are going to uh, other local high schools, other local uh, Catholic schools. I wish them nothing but the best. I, I, I tell them to take coaching, to be coachable, to have fun and enjoy the moment. Um I'm not one that's going to come out here and get mad. I'm not going to, I'm not one that's going to like petition to transfer and say, I'm going to ruin some ninth graders life. Some 11th graders life. I'm not that guy. If you want to play for Manchester football, I'm going to coach you. If you don't want to play for Manchester football, I'm going to root for you. Um, that may be a, a different aspect, but right now I don't think Manchester football is there yet to be on that recruiting scale. Um, and that's on me. I'm calling myself out, looking at you guys in the camera and I'm saying, I got to be better. Manchester football has to be better. And this upcoming year, I hope I make that that change where when we do start winning, you know, now we have 71 kids on our roster top to bottom. That's pretty good for Manchester yeah, that's, football. That's your, your numbers have been very good. And last year you yeah. were what? And by the way, I was more talking uh, uh, college recruiting. <laughs> Well, there you go. Look, so look, you're gonna get my you're gonna get my gonna honest him, answer all the time. I was gonna let him get through this part. I was gonna let him get through that part because I know that's it. Because you I know my it, cousin. Really, in all honesty, Dave, like, I, I, I didn't even think about that. Part no, I mean, it, look, yeah. it's it's something that that obviously Tommy and I go back and forth with, discuss it. Obviously, yeah. me being in a parochial world, him being in a public school world, me being in this world, just talking about like obviously optics itself. You know, just yep. like and like and I think. He uh, obviously I'm biased, but I think his approach is, is excellent to that. Right. Like he's he, you got in order to sell something, it really helps when the product you're selling is is something worth worth. Yeah. It, right. Like it's hard to sell, you know, shit, you know, or, you know, it's kind of, you know, so you got to put it all together and look big picture. I also think the approach of, hey, good luck where you're going. And then oh, that's, keep yeah, that absolutely. good relationship for the bounce back. Yeah, but I'm not even look, and yeah, I guess that's great in the in the in the hindsight of it. I yeah, know that's a not bounce even back. your thought process. No, but, but like what I don't know. Maybe like again, yeah. I call it the I call it the positive Duddy effect, right? Coach Duddy, who I played for. What what good am I gonna get from petitioning a transfer or losing a recruit? Right. Like, what am I gonna? Uh, that's not what a man is, right? Coach Duddy always said, I know 18-year-old men and I know 55-year-old boys. What if I am all salty because line. an eighth grader wants to go to another school? That's me being a boy, right? I got to set the precedent at Manchester. We got to win some football games. Now, I have 71 kids in Manchester, which is a pretty, you know, we're the smallest group three in the state of New Jersey by six students, right? Six students less from a male population <laughs> standpoint, we would be a group two. Now, I'm not saying Central and South Jersey group two playoffs are easier than group three playoffs, but from a PowerPoint standpoint, from a number standpoint, yes. having 71 kids is pretty good. Um, but when Manchester, and I'm not saying if, when Manchester football wins, I'm going to 
tell you that it's going to take, it, it's going it, to, you know, we're going to have, I uh, hopefully, hopefully a hundred, a hundred more kids. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, more than a hundred kids. Um, so that, that's how I look at it. I know you were talking about college coach, but um, that's, that's my aspect because I know the rules are changing uh, in, right. in the state of New Jersey from high school. So. All right. And now you can get into how you get guys to that next level guys that, because yeah. look, you do have, I mean, look, you got some individual talent, right? Like you're going to have some guys that can go places to play. Yeah. How are you going to handle that in terms of that whole recruiting aspect? Yeah. So uh, last year, um, you know, I had, I don't know, I think I had several seniors that graduated. I would say a few contributors. Um, one of them is going to play for the New Jersey Warriors. Um, another one is going to be a scholarship track runner at Lock Haven, which is Division Two, and he's going to be walking on for football. Uh, and Tyrone Benjamin, he was one of the leading receivers in the short conference last year. Um, I make it a point, and you know, maybe you can go back to my age here because I was on the recruiting trail ten years ago as a player. Um, I have relationships with a, a lot, I would say, dozens of head coaches uh, at the Division Two and Division Three level, even one Double A. Um, where I make it a point to sell my kids. I wouldn't be doing my job as a head football coach if I wasn't proponent, promoting my program, promoting my kids, getting them into the weight room to meet with our kids um, and selling them. You know, and I, I'd like to think, yeah, like you said, Derek, we do have a lot of individual talent. You know, we got I have a rising sophomore defensive end uh, and Curtis Mayer, who put on 30 pounds of muscle, grew two inches. Um, Joe Harismiak from from Rutgers was all he had to saw was one play against Tom Tiber East and said, this kid's on my radar. Um, that was huge. And I kind of, I love that Rutgers gets to every high school because that, that, that was awesome. Um, I have some sophomores uh, who are now going to be juniors uh, that, that I, you know, I had eight, I had eight sophomores start on both sides of the ball last year. Um, yeah. So, so they're on the radar. I, I have a lot of seniors up and coming that were all division as juniors, all conference as juniors last year. Um, so just to get, just to sell my kids and, and just to get them in the faces of college coaches is huge. Get them to go to uh, different clinics like Boardwalks Beast and, and, and Shores Best and just to get them in the faces to see what they can do in the off season is, is huge. And, and that's probably my number one job uh, in the off season is to, is to get my kids to go to college. That's the end goal. Yeah. The end goal is to get them to get a secondary education. And if they can get football uh, on top of that, that, that's, that's even better. So um, that's kind of my aspect on that. Yeah. Well, I think it, it's, um, you know, it was interesting when we had, uh, I think it was not coach Grant, but it was uh, coach Holman who talked about like trans he's really like trans into transforming their lives and yeah. how football could be transformative. And he talked a lot about it and he talked about how recruiting is a big aspect for those kids Enable, enabling them to transform their lives, but being able to go to college, leverage football to be able to do that, get themselves a better education. Um, is that something that you feel is important in your program? Because there's a couple of philosophies. Like I coached with guys that, you know, basically felt like most of their players will be Division three kids and they're going to push that to enjoy high school football as much as they can. And if college became an option for them, great. Uh, and then I've been around, you know, talking to coach Holman, talking to coach um, uh, Bell. Uh, oh. I, you know, he, he really, they really drive home the point that college is an opportunity for you to get yourself an education. So there's obviously different yeah. schools of thought of it. You know, I'm, there's no right or wrong answer. What, what, are kind of, what, what is your overall philosophy on that with respect to football? Yeah, look, I, um, I'm all academics, right? So, uh, you know, to take another cliche answer, I was lucky enough to go to a Division II school that offered me uh, a good amount of academic money where they matched my athletic scholarship to make it almost a half ride. So I was lucky on that aspect. For my kids, you know, if, if they want to go and just be an academic student, I'm fine with it because you both mm -hmm. know how – how much the commitment is to be a college football player. My little brother's going through it right now at Monmouth University as a preferred as a walk, walk on, on. It, as a as a walk on. And and I put walk on in quotes because he he's just another guy on the team who's getting treated like a scholarship player. Um, yeah. But at the other aspect of it too, coach, is that you know selfishly, you know, as a as a as a new head coach, my reputation is also on the line. If I say to a coach, "Hey, this kid's a one double A kid." 
um, and he's not, you know, they might not take my email seriously. They might not take my Twitter DM seriously. So I have to also be not not selfish, but like realistic in a way of where could these kids play? Where's their commitment level at to the game of football? Um, where are they from an academic standpoint? Do they just get by? Are they actually studying? Are they are they taking are they doing what they need to do to get it done in the classroom and in the weight room? Do they play multiple sports? Um, so my aspect is how bad do you, you know, my and Derek, you told me this, too. My, my dad tells me this, too. Do you like football? Do you love football or do you live football? And if you don't live football, then maybe college football is not for you on no matter what level. And we're seeing that with the transfer portal after after COVID, too. Division three football is not easy. Um, and, and, and every player who plays at any level should be blessed. Um, so I, I take that approach with my kids um, when I sit down with college coaches um, after they meet my kids. I have a one on one conversation with those college coaches and, and we go from there. Um, but, you know, selfishly, at the end of the day, too, my reputation is on the line is, is am I a realistic recruiter to sell my kids as well? Um, right. So I got to take that to I got to take that to an account. I think that's a huge point is being able to diagnose. That's where those coaches that have had the experience can really be a huge asset for you because they've seen so many different types of players over the years and all the, that head coaching experience. Um, not not just obviously your experience, which you're getting super quick, but also the uh, the experience and leveraging those guys who've been there. Um, because they also the great thing is those guys have relationships too, which is yeah. great that you'll be able to draw from, which I think is is so unique for a head coach um, that's that's younger that you yeah. have people that have those relationships that you can get ingrained uh, and 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 indoctrinated right into so you then have those relationships for the long term which is really cool i mean that's yeah. a really really unique cool aspect um uh of of your situation which i think is is great um and an example is coach zabrowski from king's college you know um he recruited me when i was uh you know in 2012 a senior in high school getting recruited out of high school he was recruiting me now he's the assistant head coach and defense coordinator at Kings. He's recruiting my kids. Uh, he recruited my little brother. So to have those relationships is, is mm -hmm. huge. And and being a Division two football player at Stonehill College, and you know I'm, I'll I'll come right out and say I didn't play that much. Um, but to see the teammates that I had that got NFL tryouts at a Division two level, and now Stonehill's one double A in the NEC, is it, huge. I I you know. I, you know, talent changes every year. Um, the game gets faster and the game gets, you know, more talented every year. Um, but graduating college in 2017 and being a football player and now being a head coach in 2023, you get to see where would your kid be able to play on this type of team? And that helps right. me a huge lot. Did you watch uh, Swamp Kings yet? I watched the first episode last night with my wife. Um, and I think Tim Tebow came out of the womb uh, just as mature as he is now. <laughs> I, I, when was that? When was Tim Tebow ever immature? You know, like that's that. my question. <laughs> wait, wait till you get to episode two where he talks about how he, um, uh, how he, when he he he's first joined youth football. Did you saw oh. that, Derek? Where he, yeah, what, and the coach was talking about guys. It's not about winning. It's about having fun. And he looked at him and he said, "Coach, this sucks." <laughs> well, what about the Friday and Saturday night workouts when they put the war paint on their face? I'm like, God, That's what you know, I said to God bless I Florida said, football. I said, if my quarterback <laughs> walked in the weight room like that, I'm running through a wall. Yeah. And oh, then he yeah. got the needed, the needed fourth and one. Uh, I forgot who they were playing, but his freshman year, they're like, we're putting in Tim Tebow. And he gets How about it. The jump he does the he, first he's out. Throwing a jump pass, yeah, like yeah. Oh my god! Listen, it, it, I obviously, I obviously uh, have been having later nights lately, so I got to rip <laughs> through all the episodes and watch the whole damn thing. So, but let's just, I mean, look, a Tim Team, uh, just well, a whole nother level, man. I mean, and you know, really it's that. Yeah, we, so, me, uh, me, and my cousin, me and my cousin are lucky on on this level. Is that my wife is due in October. His, uh, he was just blessed enough to have a baby girl. We're both having girls. Um, so my wife, all of a sudden, you know, we've been watching Friday Night Lights and Swamp Kings and, and Last Chance You. You know, I've been coaching for five years. She's been I've been playing since she's met me. Now she wants to be a coach's wife and she wants to. Watch, I love it. Look, better late than never. She wanted to watch Swamp <laughs> Kings. She gets mad if I watch Hard Knocks and she's not with me. 
Um, yes, so that is the, I got <laughs> <she drank, she laughs> so Is you this watch? your first time watching Friday Night Lights the uh, series? No, I've watched it like four or five oh, times through. So but my cool. wife, my that wife loves it. That was she, my she, first she, time watching it. This was my first time ever watching oh, really? the series itself. Uh, yeah, and I my just wife, actually, I actually, uh, I turned to Jen after one of the episodes, and I said, you know what? Like, there's not a episode where they don't touch on something that I've dealt with firsthand. It was just right. craziness. Whether you know what I mean, whether it be Booster Club, kids getting in trouble, <laughs> or this issue, I'm looking at it going. Damn, dude, I've yep. really I've been through all of this shit. <laughs> and my wife wants to be Tammy Taylor. She wants to, <laughs> my wife wants to be Tammy Taylor. She because I tell her, I'm like, look, my wife's a nurse, right? Sometimes she comes to games late because she gets off at six, seven o'clock. But I said, I if I lose by 42 or win by 42, I, I want to go kiss my wife on the fence. You know, at the end of the day, she's still gonna love me, hopefully. Uh, but hopefully, you know, <laughs> but no, this has been this has been great. I actually just got her a shirt on Amazon that says my uh, what does it say? My husband doesn't care what play you think he should call. Love ah, the coach's nice. wife. <laughs> Listen, so she's funny. gonna be wearing she's gonna be wearing that shirt on Friday night. <laughs> poor uh, poor Dave's dealing with it right now, man, because he's coaching the AU stuff, and this is the first time that his son Troy is in like pads, right? So this was the first game they had this weekend, and you know, poor <laughs> Nicole's going, "Oh my god, like what's going on? My baby is smashing in there." Listen, it'll probably take her a game or two before she starts fighting people. I know where she's from, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Nicole doesn't. Nicole doesn't mess around. When your oh, wife, my God, football, when your wife fun. supports you, there's nothing better. There's yeah, nothing oh, yeah. Better. There's nothing it, better. It's fun. Because I decided to take a, you know, I changed my careers from working in media to being a teacher and coach in the middle of COVID when my wife's an ICU nurse. So she's getting her butt kicked every day in the ICU floor. And I say, hey, I want to change my job and switch careers when jobs are at a scarce. And I want to do this full time. And she supported me through and through. Um, so... Yeah, you know, she she loves it. And now that I, you know, I went from an hour and 40 commute in Parsippany to a four minute right. commute living in the town that I coach in. So it, it was all she worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That's got no, a that's, deal. That's a much better deal. That's when I took the job at Red Bank, I was the oh. head coach at Indian Hills. Yeah. I was doing the same thing that you were doing. I was oh. here and I was commuting. And actually, I loved Indian Hills. I really did. Yeah. Um, but it was just so, so long. It was such a long commute. Yep. That I think I think uh, everyone was gonna kill me at some point if I if I <laughs> kept doing that commute, you know, to go to football. But um, we love the game, man. There's something different about football, right? I mean, no, that's why we do it. No, no doubt about it. I was I was glad to be able to go to go to Red Bank, but it it, it hurt because I liked the, I liked the Indian Hills a ton. I remember when uh, when Derek was at Red Bank with you, and my brother was at Donovan, and you decided to kick an onside kick right at his chest. <laughs> I told him I was going to do it. <laughs> that was great. And I'm in the sidelines. I go, Derek's going to kick it right at 44. I know for a fact he's going to do it. <laughs> and there it was. <laughs> uh, Don Donovan was that I think it's, good, I think it's. Man. I think it's one of those things. I mean, listen, that's when they had that co the, the pretty good the quarterback, quarterback there Brian. And yeah, they were good. Yeah, yep, yeah, oh, yeah. And Coach Kirchion's going doing good things there. I always text him. You know, there's no there's no bad blood between us. I'm happy what he's doing with my alma mater. Um, you know, it, yeah, it's nice God to bless see him, those man. guys win on a consistent basis. Tell them basis that any guys that are from your your town that aren't starting just to send them back. <laughs> uh yeah, you could say that, Coach. Shu. I'm not. I'll tell say you a couple of things I used to do when I was at Powell Park. I used to get all my players back from Burn Catholic and Paramus, Paramus Catholic. I used to go sit in the stands and watch their J, uh, JV and freshman games. And as as soon as they thought that they were uh, uh, getting the shaft, I was standing right there, yeah. baby. I was right there. Come on back. <laughs> oh my God! I'll never forget my cousin right here. Right, the long phone calls we have. You know, you you're playing at Donovan, you're playing at Monsignor, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. And then boom, Donovan turns it on. My brother's there. Well, your brother lost more football games than you won championships. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, Derek. I got it, bro. I got it. I'm just happy to see my alma mater win, man. Just because I'm a public <laughs> yeah. school head coach in Ocean County doesn't mean I'm not rooting for him. My jersey's right behind me. So I, I'll tell you the, <laughs> the greatest it. the greatest thing about that though is is when like obviously we've all of us have had the fortunate or unfortunate uh, uh, privilege of coaching with D Smith. Oh yeah. 
so D line coach, so, baby. So, so the best the best story I have is your old man told me like you had to you had to like block him or go one on ones with him in a game or something when he was playing. And like I mean, oh, I'm just man. thinking about you playing offensive line and D okay. Smith who ends up yeah. being a division one defensive lineman. Yeah, so all right, so let me tell this story before Derek puts his dramatic Derek spin on it. So Coach <laughs> Coach Smith, who's I'm blessed to, that he lives in Manchester, played at Monmouth University, played at Jackson Memorial. Uh, yeah, he's he on my staff. Us, dude. Yeah, oh, he's the he's the man. Yeah, I love coached, him. He's one of my he best friends. For a year. Even better, our wives are good friends, so that makes the job even a little bit more easier. Um, so Shore's best camp, I don't know, 2010, 2011. I remember I played for coach Duddy. We ran the triple option. I'm 5'11, 180. I'm playing center. We played a lot of even front. So all I got to do is just get to the second level. We run the fastest lineman drill. I get up and I win it. I'm 5'11, 180. I should be a running back, a slot back. Yo, this this man ain't no lineman, Coach Smith. This ain't this man ain't no lineman, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, I am. Yo, no, you're not. I go, yeah, well, then put your pads on. Needless to say, a little scruff broke out. <laughs> um, I was on the bottom of that pile. But the good thing about that story is, is that I tell my kids that story, knowing that your head coach never backs down from anyone, no matter how yeah, big there you go, buddy. Nice and strong spin. they are. <laughs> so nice that was, a, and now and then I, I see him, I, you know, I see him at a local restaurant in town and I get the job and he happens to be at that restaurant in town the night I got board approved. And I'm like, yo come coach with me. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. He's like, I live in Manchester. I'm like, that's even better. Yes, I got a, I got a stipend position, position for you. Come coach my D line. Oh, and money. If you got money, and, you're good. Yeah. Yep. So he's awesome. He just had a baby. Uh, he has a baby girl. He just had a baby yep. boy, Juju. Uh, him and V live right down the street from me. So that's, that's just, it, you know, in 2010, you tell me 13 years later, he's going to be my assistant coach. I would laugh at yeah. you, but it's just, it's, it's awesome. A, the networking, man. It's, this is a network that's, that's you know, yeah. unlike anything yep. else. No doubt. Well, I remember Coach Smith running down the sideline when Owen Laughlin returned the kick, and he was chasing. Him. Remember that? Uh, we we won on a uh, our our, uh, our walk off kick return. We won on a walk off kick return against Central. They kicked the ball. Thing there, I've ever seen in my life. there was like, I mean, what was there? F- five seconds in the game, or five three seconds, seconds? I think they kicked like a ground ball. Under ten. Under ten. Yep, it, it kicked the ground ball, and it squeaked mm-hmm. to our back guy. One of our back guys, Owen Laughlin, and yep. he took it. He got through and got to the outside and Dude. scored. No time left on the clock. I love it. I that, love is it. That crazy? It was crazy. It was was, crazy. was Derek calling the special teams? Does he take credit for that? Well, <laughs> this listen. He takes credit for guy, whether he had anything to do with it or not. <laughs> it was like, listen, it, this was one of those like, dude, like I don't even know, like, like they executed yeah. every way you were supposed to do it right, and you know, and you're taking off crowd. your headset, running down the stands, probably thinking the game's dude, over. And then... All I know is, <laughs> and you may know it, and I'm gonna blow him up here, Coach Boberts. Okay, point blank uh, guy. Yep. He decided that he was gonna jump in the air with Dave and do a, like a hip check, like, yeah, type of chest to chest. My man was horizontal <laughs> to I the crushed, ground. I crushed him. Dude, I crushed Dave him. laid him out, dude. It was like a flashback <laughs> to him playing linebacker at UConn. Dude, Bobert. He didn't get high break. enough. He didn't get high enough. He didn't have good it. enough bird. I'll tell you what. I love it. Maybe after the game he did. But either way, he definitely <laughs> was on the ground, dude. And I'll tell you. I don't know, man, but it was – I never saw a big man like that hit the ground and get up so fast, but we got it on I tape for history, dude. It was one of the craziest parts of a game I've ever seen. Hey, you, do but, some uh, crazy, yeah. you do some crazy stuff when you win, man. Uh, yeah, D. Smith's a do, great no. dude, bro. D. Smith's a yeah, really good guy, really best. good coach, really, really He's good the, coach. You know, Attention going up real detail. quick, one more, one more thing about Coach Smith. So I just told you about my defensive end, my sophomore defensive end, Curtis Mayer, who's getting looked at by some, by some Division One schools. Last year, he's a freshman. He's practicing with the freshman. My dude, Kurt, has goggles on, long blonde hair. We call him Sunshine. <laughs> he's probably 6'1", maybe 180 pounds soaking wet. Now he's 6'2", like 215. And Dar- uh, Meech comes over to me and goes, Coach, you got to put Kurt in. I go, Kurt? Goggles, Kurt? He goes, yeah, bro. I'm like, all right, man. Like, Coach Smith knows how to see talent. We put him in. He crushes our our uh, starting offense on scout D. We put him in on uh, starting D. 
He has two sacks against Tom's River East in our in our second win last year. And I'll never question that man again. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, he knows how to he knows how to find talent, man. That's great. That that is great, dude. Dude, dude this has been <laughs> awesome having you on the podcast. We wanna we wanna extend and first of all, before I let you go, yeah. um on Twitter, like how can uh people reach out to you if they ever want to have you on their their podcast, something like that? How yeah. You- uh, I'm Coach T. Farrell on Twitter, um, and then on Instagram and Twitter, uh, at Manchester TWPFB uh, is our Manchester football account. So I appreciate you guys having me on. I feel like I was just in the car driving home from Parsippany with you guys. This was this just felt like a long <laughs> a long drive that well, got me through that. traffic. So I appreciate Listen, it. Listen, we just we get on, we just talk ball, buddy. I really appreciate <laughs> that's it. You we have fun. Good luck this week, Thank you guys. I appreciate Good you luck having this me, week, Coach. Thank you. All right. All right, Bye. man. Talk soon. That was awesome, dude. That was awesome, Pog. That that really was great. Um, I really, I really, I, I had to switch to the. Um, I, I had to yeah, go your I, route. I had to go your route. You know why? Because not only is the craziness going on, but my, um, I brought my laptop upstairs, and it's always connected to the um, right power source. So I never look at it. You know what I mean? Right. So if for some reason I accidentally knock it off, I'm using it next to the power source. So I just plug it back in. You just plug I it look, in. You're good. I look you're like we're 15, minutes, we're 15 minutes in. And I look and I'm like, what? I have, oh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm out of juice. I'm like, there's no way I'm going downstairs in this okay. craziness and, and trying to juice it up. So I just like, let me make the switch. That's why there was a little like Weird echo for like a minute or two until I figured it out how to make the switch. But um, uh, the other yeah. part, like, he, like yeah, it's funny, dude, because you know he's so young, but he's so mature beyond his years. You know what I'm saying? Like, you would never imagine that that kid is a is a kid, you know, and that this is his first head coaching job. He's just been around the game for so long, and like you said, he's done the right thing by surrounding himself with some of those older guys to kind of you know show him the ropes a little bit. I think that was a an, an extremely smart, smart move. Very, very smart move. I certainly in, in, in more ways than one, right? And not just the hey, those guys can help me, but in like an optics type of move where if I'm a superintendent and I'm hiring this young guy and I see him go and hire older guys, right? To kind of make sure now I'm looking at a guy that's saying, okay, he's kind of doing it the right way. Absolutely. And I think what's really funny, what what's really interesting about that is that. He did it. He's got three of them, which is is, is fantastic. I, I was thinking back when he was talking about that. I was like, I tried to do that by hiring Dara White with as my assistant when I was at, like first got the job at Saddlebrook. I remember. <laughs> and they kept, <laughs> and they basically almost they, they they were like, no. I'm like, wait a minute. I can't have the old head coach who is the winningest head coach in Saddlebrook history. I was You're like, so- I'm trying to take the guy that actually did something right here. Yes, I said that can only happen at Saddlebrook High School. I can only have, and you taught there, so you know it, it can only oh, happen there. It's funny because he does, he does have the pretty much the one guy that did actually do a little bit of winning at Manchester, right? And yes, he said that. He's a, right because that he's been a teacher, and it's his, it's his uncle pretty much. So, and I've met him a bunch of times. Great guy, and he's in the building as a teacher as well. So it kind of kills two birds with one stone, you know. Yeah, oh, no doubt about it. And and it, I think that, that that I didn't really realize. And I didn't realize he had 11 coaches on his staff. And yes, I didn't, he's got a, I, yeah, he's got a huge staff, dude. I mean, they well, have because here's the thing. They have young. 71 kids. Wow. I, and that's, a, that's another, I'm telling you, it's another, like, he's now creating something where people want to come and do it. It's just a matter of time. That's it. Could Patience, happen now, though. Process, you know, one thing about the shore, the one, like, you know, we talked about the shore scheduling, like the pros and the cons of it. The one pro of them constantly changing it each year is that um, groups can get opportunities, you know what I mean? Because of get the better. Whole, yeah, to get better. Now, I mean, the negative, uh, not, not for Manchester, but in general, the negative is that, like, if you're – um, near the top, but not the top. You could end up getting, depending shafted. on the, yeah, you could get it shafted. But, but it's you know depending pro- on the year, it's depending on how many people like went from bad to good or good to bad. Yeah. If you're if you're kind of that, 
you're if you're say, good but not not elite, meaning I want to say like, that you're that if you're that mana swan. Right, you're very very good, but you're not like you're. You're not always gonna be, I don't know what nine and two. Like you're, go, you're always gonna be a, a positive on the positive side. You'll always be a plus, but you might not always be, you know, whatever. You right, might have if more you than have three a negative, losses. You'll drop down, but if if you're always right. on the positive, but you'll you, kind of just stay. You're not like ten and no, a type of team that's ten and no every year. It's, I yeah. think the pressure from the outside conferences, right, will change the way they do that, unless they decide to just be, you know. Hey, we're the shore, and this is kind of how we do things. But I think the pressure from like not only the other conferences, but also like even the New Jersey Coaches Association, like those guys, you can tell that they're just like, come on, shore, just you know, do just do what everybody else does. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I don't know, it'll be interesting to see. But it it is look, it you can only do what you're either told or allowed to do within those parameters, right? So you kind of just take it and you maximize it. Like what am I going to do? I can't sit here and, and complain about how it is. You just got to kind of roll with it and go. So absolutely. Who knows? Great podcast. Let, let, let's Good sign stuff, off. Buddy. We'll, we'll see you next time. All right, guys. We'll see All you right. next time.